common modalités de gouvernance. So first thing you present yourself. Okay, uh, so my name is Kevin Flanagan and uh, I'm a sort of independent uh, activist and uh, working in the area of the commons. I've worked for a number of years with the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so my first question is I already asked it. So how do you see the emergence the recent emergence of the commons and the, the entrance of the commons in the politic, political space. Yeah. Well, over, over the last few years, I think there's been a sort of uh, uh, growing political maturity within the, the commons, the interests and uh, um, of people who are getting involved in the commons. Um, particularly the, the area that I was, I've been involved in, which is coming from the area of uh, dig digital commons, collaborative economy, peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. Um, so I see there's, there's always been a politics to the commons, but um, my feeling is that uh, that politics is, uh, was, um, has moved from being a sort of a, a kind of a cultural politics um, embedded in a sort of, you know, a, a tech, tech culture into a broader, a broader, uh, broader politics, um, not just within Maybe per perhaps first spreading from uh, to the, you know the hacker culture to the, the maker spaces, and I, I think I think it it uh, I think it follows quite broadly in some ways how the the idea if you take see, you see how this idea is about open source and creative commons have has spread from software into all these other aspects into into education into scientific research into. Uh, open design, open hardware. Um, so the ideas have been spreading, and uh, but the political maturity, I think, uh, is is when you start to think not just about uh, you know the 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 licenses and what what we can do together in terms of collaboration, but also how we can work together with uh, political movements and exploring sort of shared values with uh, more, more traditional political movements such as the, the cooperative movement or the social solidarity economy. And uh, those, those uh, while, while uh, there have been discussions for a number of years around things like, uh, so what would uh, open cooperatives look like, you know, a, a marriage of cooperatives and um, the collaborative economy and peer production. Uh, this has really sort of taken off a lot over the last, the last two years. Um, and that's, that's really quite exciting because we start to see, uh, we're really starting to see some very interesting uh, initiatives um, coming, coming to life that integrate uh, or take a commons approach in a very holistic way. Uh, both in in terms of you know democratic governance, uh, sharing within the community, um, share, sh sharing of resources, but also looking at uh, other forms of exchange that can be currency, alternative currency, community currencies, these kinds of things, and seeing how they can work together. So, yeah, I think yeah. But what we we're seeing now is the, the commons entered big cities like uh, Barcelona, Bologna, uh, and uh, in other contexts, the, I mean, at the local regional level, uh, the commons are really something that becoming becomes to be real. But that's not not an utopia. That's really a, a real way 
a new way of doing things and doing politics, etc. Mm -hmm. People, people say that this maybe is a way for a post-capitalist transition. Mm -hmm. I know that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, foundation proposed this a kind of um, camino uh, towards a post uh, transition for a transition. Yeah beyond capitalism, beyond maybe development as well. Yeah. Um, so the, the if for, to think, think about the, uh, you know, one of the core things about the, the commons is that it's uh, a movement sort of beyond market and the, the, the binary of market and state. And uh, our, is historically our typical way of meeting the needs of society have either been via the, via the state redistribution or via the market by private enterprise. And we really see that this, uh, this binary system is in, in a crisis. And the, what, what the commons is coming from is, is, show, is, uh, is showing that things can be done um, outside, beyond, outside of the market and state uh, binary. And that there are other ways of organizing and uh, producing value in society. Um, so the, in terms of the, the post-capitalist, the commons transition uh, plan of the peer-to-peer -peer society, peer-to-peer uh, -to -peer foundation, it has, um, there's a few uh, sort of core elements that, that work together. So um, you would have, uh, it's based on, I guess, three pillars, and those are the uh, uh, ethical economy, uh, the partner state, and the commons. So these are three key concepts. So the partner state is um, really, you know, a question of, you know, how how do we as commoners, how do we how do we uh, engage with the state? How can the state uh, work with us and act to actually support commons? How can it be a partner in, in, uh, in supporting um, uh, grassroots initiatives, social, you know, social movements, uh, economic democracy, and, and the production of commons? So the, it, it really, if, if, if we want to see this in society, we need, we need to have a new vision of, of the state and, ho and how it works. Um, so that would involve, uh, for example, integrating uh, processes for participatory democracy. Um, it could involve uh, you know, new forms of deliberation and, uh, with, with communities. Um, what, uh, that's, that's a first part, but how does, the, how does the partner state support the commons? Uh, and and uh, I, when, when I'm speaking about the commons, really, I, I'm thinking about it in an expanded sense. So it, it, not, not solely knowledge commons, but uh, you know, both, both there are, are environmental uh, resources, water, land, um, you know, the, 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 the atmosphere, but also more broadly in, I, I guess, a, a sort of democratic practice of commoning in how we organize our enterprises, so social economy, uh, cooperatives. So it's a very broad kind of uh, umbrella. Um, and so there are many, many ways in which the, a partner state can support the commons. Um, uh, there's a connection here, I think, with uh, movements like degrowth uh, in, in the sense that what you're doing when you're uh, creating commons is, in a way, creating a kind of buffer between, well, uh, but at the moment there's very little social protection. Uh, the, the influence of finance capital over, over the nation state is, uh, and, and our lives in general is, is completely, it's completely out of whack. And one of the ways that we can create uh, more resilient communities is uh, by uh, is through a kind of process of de decommodification. Um, it give, it creates a, a bit of a, a buffer between um, between uh, sort of the ups and downs of the global market 
and uh, by by putting ownership under democratic control or putting ownership into uh, commons, open commons. So what you're doing is you're taking uh, both creative work out of the world of uh, commodities, um, uh, tradable commodities, into the world of sharing, and uh, and also taking enterprises out of the world of uh, you know, uh, share, shareholder enterprises, which are um, and transforming into them into d democratic, community-owned enterprises. Uh, so how can how can the partner state support them? In many ways, it can do that. Uh, if uh, you know. For example, making a privilege for a socially driven enterprise uh, so that they have uh, lower, ta lower tax rates, for example, or they pay, um, they pay lo lower rates within the, with the municipalities or, or government. Um, the examples you said, you, you noted there of uh, Bologna. And, uh, and Barcelona, well one of the things that's interesting about Bologna is that it's a real enabler, the Bologna regulation for the urban commons is a, is a real enabler of, of um, civic activity um, in which uh, local, local government and local institutions have come together to uh, sort of reduce, you can think of it as reducing the barriers to uh, civic participation and uh, the culture and production, production of the commons. Uh, so they provide, they provide uh, working with between the, the local municipality, uh, educational institutions and uh, other partners. They provide spaces, they provide training, uh, they provide uh, the, their support I think for some kind of uh, insurance cover and things like that. Uh, so that really reduces the overheads for um, for grassroots initiatives, uh, creative initiatives, cultural initiatives to to get organized and do things. So that's that's one example that's happening now. Of Can you consider um, that, uh, for example, Bologna is a kind of uh, laboratory for uh, partner state. Yeah, model? certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, certainly, you certainly would. Um, and then Barcelona is another is another example. And uh, where there been, where of course Barcelona and Comun uh, are very much rooted in the as a as a within the social movements, within uh, neighborhood assemblies, and uh, they have it's in the name. They're very much thinking about the commons as well. So uh, they've been working um, with people in Barcelona to to change the policies there about the collaborative economy. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different experience and another one that's quite interesting to look at and to pay attention to. So, um, the other, the other, so, so there's, there's two of them. There's, two, there's the partner state and then there's and commons and we, we have an understanding about the commons. And the third would be the eth ethical economy. So that's cooperative enterprise. Um, so, social initiatives, uh, solidarity economy. Um, that not only not only are they uh, they can they have a benefit towards society, but also benefiting and contributing to the commons. So you have um, on the one hand you have civic participation and contribution to the commons, and you also have ethical economy, who might uh, build enterprises around the commons. And they, they, so they co-produce commons, and uh, they, wor they work together. Uh, to represent, as re representation of the commons, or representation of these, uh, these, this ethical economy enterprises, you can, so we'll start with the ethical economy, you could have, you could have a chamber of the commons, which is very much like the idea of the, the chamber of commerce. Um, so, uh, where they, where you could have, you can have different enterprise businesses coming together, and uh, advocating on behalf, in the interests of, of the commons at the at the local, and the regional, national levels, and likewise, I think it's important to have um, a balance 
between the interests of those who are, uh, I guess, um, uh, making making business in relation to the commons and the the the, the civic commons. Yeah. So this is on the, so on this end you have you have assemblies of the commons. So that are that are also democratically managed uh, to represent the interest of, of uh, commoners more broadly, um, rather than just necessarily uh, in the interest of, of the, the businesses that depend on the commons. So it's a broader, broader representation. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's, is that a... Yeah, yeah. just a question about the Chamber of the Commons. The Chamber of the Commons is, is uh, only the <coughs> The commons-based enterprise, or is a mix of the commons-based enterprise plus other kind of enterprise like I don't know, uh, Uber, uh, collaborative economy, not commons collaborative economy, but just what they call that. No, I, I think I think the the chamber of the commons really, you know, it's in it's in the name. It's it's uh, it's. Um, ethical enterprises that have an interest in the commons. That means that they, they contribute and participate uh, in the sustaining the commons. Mm -hmm. So uh, companies like Uber, which are based on an extractive um, model, um, they have uh, people, people sign up and they, they you know, they, it's a, like a peer-to-peer, -peer, but Uber is on a, an extractive model. It's not contributing to to the commons in, in that way, yeah. So, and talking about the assembly of commons, um, I, I've seen in the peer-to-peer -peer, um, blog uh, the example of the assembly of commons in Chicago. Mm. So, can you comment on that? I actually can't. I I don't really know an awful lot. I, I know I know that there are some people working on an assembly of the commons in Chicago. I think I think uh, I think it's early days. Um, I think one of the one of the things that uh, needs to happen is really for a lot more I, it's not a, it's not not so exciting to say dialogue, but there is a, there is there is a need for a lot more dialogue with between people who uh, are passionate about the commons and other social movements and social economy actors, so that they so that people start to recognize that there's a lot of shared values here, and um, and an opportunity to work together. Um, so I, I'm I'm really not I'm really not so familiar with what's happening in Chicago. I know there's some there's a group there. But uh, I think it's really important to have a, a broad, a broad array, array of uh, civil society actors uh, participating in uh, in any kind of assembly of the commons. Um, so that that building building those kind of alliances takes time. That's all. No. Okay. Thank you. I think that um, to explain the strategy, it's, uh, it's, it's enough. Okay. If you have something to add, I don't know, if you want to add something to... Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, I think that's, that's good. I'm happy with that too, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very okay. much. Thank <laughs> you.